Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we've got something a little bit different for you. Now to finish off this series what I'm going to be doing is stepping away from the technical side of fabric, you know understanding about pipelines and lake houses and all this kind of stuff and really I want to focus on you and what fabric could mean for your career. Now I think it's normal for a lot of people out there especially Power BI developers to look at the news around fabric, start learning about fabric, and then suddenly think, hmm, this could really represent a bit of a change in direction for my career. A lot of the world of data engineering, data science, analytics engineering suddenly becomes a lot more accessible. So you've got a lot of ideas around, hmm, should I be focusing on this for the next few years in my career? So in this video, we're gonna go through a few things. We're gonna start by looking at some of the options available to you in a fabric world in terms of your career. We're going to talk about why I think that could be a beneficial move for you. And we're also going to talk about some of the mindset shifts that you might have to go through, some things that you might have to think about differently when you're moving into different roles like analytics engineering, data engineering, data science. Now, this is a topic I'm particularly passionate about because this is a transition that I made in my own career. So about six or seven years ago, I was building Power BI reports within a company, and then I moved more into data science roles and more recently data engineering, data strategy roles. So this is something I've got a lot of views on and hopefully I can kind of share some of the lessons learned and hope that it helps you make good decisions over what you're gonna be doing in the next few years of your career. So let's get into it. So to kick us off, I wanted to go through some of the options that are available to you. So the first option really is to continue what you're doing with Power BI. Like if you love building reports and you're happy with that, that's absolutely fine. I'm not going to stop you from doing that. That's absolutely great. Now, I do think it will still be very beneficial for you, even if you want to continue down that Power BI report development route to learn more about Fabric. Because in the future, I believe that a lot of the reports that you're going to be building is going to be built from data in Fabric. As more and more companies migrate over, they start doing a lot of their storage and modeling inside Fabric. It's really going to help you in your career if you know more about Fabric. And I think the more you learn about Fabric, the more valuable it's going to make you as a Power BI developer. For example, if, if you can take control over you know, creating SQL views in a data warehouse, for example, molding the data that you need, that you need for your reports on your own, if you can take some of that autonomy, it's definitely going to help out your company and it's going to make you a lot more valuable. Take the pressure off data engineering teams, takes the pressure off analytics engineers, and it makes you a more valuable employee for your company if you can do more of that work yourself. And one thing to bear in mind is that Power BI is a very powerful tool. It's kind of like an all-in-one Swiss army knife. It can do lots of different things, right? You can do data ingestion, data transformation, modeling, and data visualization all in one tool. And that's absolutely fantastic. But just because you can do something in one tool doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best place to do these things. With the introduction of Fabric, a lot of that data ingestion, data storage, data transformation piece is going to be moved upstream, right? You probably heard of Roche's maxim of data transformation. Data should be transformed as far upstream as possible and as far downstream as necessary, right? And what that means in a fabric world really is that a lot of the ingestion, transformation stuff is likely going to be done in Microsoft Fabric. And for me anyway, I see the future of Power BI being a lot more focused just around the visualization piece, semantic modeling, defining relationships, anything that you have to do in Power BI, like filter context and uh, that kind of stuff. That's where I think the future of Power BI will be. A lot of the transformation, cleaning, all of that stuff should be done in Fabric. And this has the benefit that your data sets can be validated, your data set can be shared more easily. They're not just confined to one semantic model. You're kind of building enterprise data assets that you can share amongst your teams more easily. So if you do want to continue down this route of developing Power BI dashboards and reports, absolutely go for it. I think it will still be worth your while to learn little bits of Fabric as much as you feel comfortable with. So if you're a little bit bored of just churning out reports, you could shift into analytics engineering. So what is analytics engineering? Well, the way that I kind of think about it is if you're a Power BI developer, your product is your report, right? That's the thing that you're, you're building and you're focusing on building beautiful reports. And the end user is your, your business user, right? The consumer of that report. Well, in analytics engineering, that focus shifts, 
right? Your data becomes the product itself and your users are the people that are going to consume that data. So it could be the Power BI developers, could be data scientists, data analysts, anyone that needs like high quality data. And when you make data the product itself, really you have to shift focus in your mindset really. You need to think about how you can deliver high quality data that's complete, that's validated, timely, well modeled, and also documented as well. And these are all slightly different things to what you think about when you're building a Power BI report. Could mean things like source controlling your ETL jobs, could be testing your code, validating your data, segregating different development, test and production workloads and data so that you're really sure that you're delivering a high quality product at the end of each pipeline, right? Your product being the data. Ultimately, your goal is to build robust pipelines that reliably produce high quality data sets that can easily be consumed by the user. Now, personally, I find this work a lot more interesting and I would definitely argue that it's a more valuable skill in businesses because businesses are crying out for high quality data. I think we've gone through the phase of BI where it's nice to just build lots of reports. Now I see the big kind of industry shift towards the demand for high quality tested validated data sets on which you can build your reporting, your machine learning models, all that kind of stuff more downstream. The focus in investment and the focus in data strategies becomes how do we make sure that our data sets are of really high quality by the time they reach that gold layer. Now if becoming an analytics engineer is the goal for your career, then a good obvious first target is the DP600 exam to become a certified fabric analytics engineer. It's going to introduce you to a lot of new technologies, ways of thinking, ways of working, and it covers quite a wide range of the fabric technologies, right? Lake houses, data warehouses, pipelines, data flows, all of these things and how we can use them together, Git integration, advanced semantic modeling, building large models and that kind of thing as well. So I definitely recommend if that's your goal, that's a really good first step to you to learn what it takes to pass that exam. And on this channel in the future, in the next few weeks, I'm going to be starting producing more content specifically around DP600 to help you pass that exam. So watch out for the announcements. If you're not subscribed already, then make sure you are subscribed to get these videos when they launch. So next up, we have the option to become a data engineer. Now, the distinction between a data engineer and an analytics engineer, those lines are quite blurry and they can mean different things to different organizations. So I don't want to get too hung up on the syntax, the terminology, but for me, a data engineer is doing a lot more work in Spark in the data engineering experience, right? So they're probably going to be better Python programmers. They're going to be doing more of the complex transformations, working more around parameterization and automation, right? So how can you do ETL jobs across all of the tables in your bronze layer, for example, working out how to pass really thorny like JSON structures, doing a lot of more complex stuff, as well as more like system optimization. How do we make sure that this engineering system as a whole is working reliably? So things like setting up testing for, for your code, making sure that that whole data pipeline is robust. Now, as well as that, I would expect data engineers to be really proficient in the data warehouse, know how to set up a data warehouse, structure a data warehouse, set up a lake house, optimize a lake house, and kind of the underlying delta tables as well. So they're a little bit more technical, a bit more advanced skill set. So if this is your goal, then a good route into that, I would say, is via the analytics engineering route. Now, next up, we've got the data scientist. So a lot of you might want to move into data science. You want to be building machine learning models that predict things about your data in your organization, right? So the distinction here really, for me at least anyway, is data science are focused a lot more around what's going to happen in the future. So Power BI developer, you're doing more descriptive analysis about what's happened in the past. Data scientist is looking about what's going to happen in the future. What's your revenue of your company going to be? What's going to impact your revenue in the future? Those kind of problems and actually really interesting problems. And I've worked as a data scientist in two companies and I absolutely loved it. What I would say is for people that want to transition from kind of Power BI to data science is that it's going to be a bit more challenging. There's a lot more skills that you have to learn. 
You have to learn about the data science process. You have to learn programming to quite a good level in Python or R. I'd recommend Python. And alongside the programming side of things, you're also gonna have to learn about a lot more theory around machine learning models. How do they work? How do you choose the right ones for different scenarios, depending on your data and your problem? But the one thing you have as a Power BI developer, or at least hopefully, is a really good understanding of the business, right? So the data scientist is a lot more business focused most of the time. So you're solving problems for the business and often you're communicating your results to people in the business as well. So your skills as a Power BI developer in that respect are gonna be quite transferable and useful, right? So if you've got experience presenting a dashboard to the business and kind of selling that idea, selling your analysis to the business, that's gonna be a really useful skill if you wanna move into data science. But there is gonna be quite a few steps for you to make to become kind of a useful data scientist, I would argue. Now for me, how I did that was I did a master's degree in data science, took two years part-time. So that's where I built up a lot of the theoretical knowledge and also practical knowledge of how to like implement data science and do data science in a business. Now, one thing I would say is that if this is your goal, then I would argue it's still beneficial to go through the route of analytics engineering, because what I find is that a lot of data scientists, especially in kind of the early career data scientists, a lot of your work is gonna be similar or more similar to data engineering or analytics engineering, right? You're gonna to have to learn how to clean data sets very effectively, very quickly, building some sort of data infrastructure. And so from my experience, at least, the role of the data scientist, especially in smaller companies, can actually look a lot more similar to a data engineer. Right? Because if you don't have a team of data engineers to help you productionize your code or build views and extract data from databases, you're going to have to learn all these skills anyway. Right, So it helps to be really good at SQL to get some data in a format or to be really good at Python to learn how to clean data, transform data, model the data that you need in the shape that you need it to do some sort of machine learning, some sort of predictive analysis. So if your goal is to be a data scientist, just be aware that there's quite a few steps you need to go through. And I think it's still worthwhile for you to go through the route of analytics engineering, data engineering, learn those skills first, because they're gonna be really valuable if you then decide to go into a role in data science. So that's some of the options that are available to you in the world of Fabric. There's probably a lot more, these are just some of the main ones that I wanted to touch on. Now, one thing that I think not many people understand or think about when they're making this kind of transition or thinking about whether it's the right thing for them, and I think it's really important, is that Fabric is built on top of technologies that are very, very widely used in the industry, right? So you're talking T-SQL, Python, Spark, Delta. All of these things are very, very transferable skills a lot more, I would argue, than the skills that you're building up in the world of Power BI. So this opens up a lot of options to you in your career. And learning these technologies is actually quite painful, right? So you need to choose your pain wisely, I would argue. So for me, it makes a lot more sense to direct your energy, your learning energy, into the technologies that are gonna give you the biggest leverage in your career. So for me, those are things like T-SQL and Python, because every company uses T-SQL and Python. And by going really deep on technologies like DAX and Power Query in the Power BI world, that's great if you wanna spend your career working in Power BI. But if you invest that time and the energy into learning things like SQL and Python, that's gonna open up a huge amount of opportunities to you because every company uses these technologies. So let's just round up this video with a few next steps for you. I would argue that a good first step for anyone really is to get a thorough understanding of analytics engineering and how that works in Microsoft Fabric. So understanding more about that engineering mindset because it underpins a lot of the other roles, right? If you wanna become a data engineer, a data scientist, a lot of these things, the technologies and the skill sets that you build up in the role of an analytics engineer, they're gonna be really, really useful. So how do you get going as an analytics engineer? Well, we've already mentioned it, I think a really good target for you is the DP600 certification. 
might require you to learn quite a lot of new technologies, new skills, but it gives you focus in your learning. Now that's not to say that if you become a certified fabric analytics engineer, you know, that's the pinnacle of your career, now you can rest and relax. No, for me, it's a bit like passing your driving test, right? It shows that you're competent enough to be trusted to do certain things. But a lot of people say that you know, once you've got your certification, that's when you really start to learn the technology and how to actually apply it in the real world. So that would be my initial focus if I was working in Power BI today, because it's very adjacent in terms of skill set, right? So you can leverage a lot of the knowledge you already have in terms of semantic modeling. I think semantic modeling is about 25% of that exam. 75% might be new stuff, but it's definitely worthwhile learning that. The final point I want to make is around how you can become valuable very quickly, because you might have built up a lot of skills in the world of Power BI, but then if you want to transition into the world of fabric, really you need to learn how to provide value to your company very quickly, right? Because you might be starting at a lower level in the world of analytics engineering, because it's quite new to you. And the best route that I see for Power BI developers to become valuable in the world of fabric, if you want to become an analytics engineer, is to focus really on a few technologies and learn them really, really well. Fabric is a really vast platform and it can be easy to get overwhelmed. You know, you've got real-time analytics, data science, data engineering, data warehousing. And so you really need to focus on the areas that are gonna give you the most value as quickly as possible. And for me, as an analytics engineer, I would be focusing on the data factory experience, so really learning data flows, which hopefully you know pretty well already if you're a Power BI developer, and data pipelines. So these are kind of the two orchestration, ETL tools that are used right across the data stack. And so it would be really worthwhile learning how to get really good at these. Now, I used to interview quite a few people at my last job, and I was actually surprised how many people have full-time jobs just creating, managing, and maintaining ADF pipelines, Azure Data Factory pipelines. So it can be your full-time job in some companies just to focus on the data pipelines part. And it's quite a simple tool, but there's layers and layers of complexity. So it's easy to get started, but then there's a lot of complexities and strategies for building more complex pipelines that you can learn in time. But I think it's a really good place to focus your energy. As well as the data factory experience, I would definitely recommend really understanding the data warehouse. So this is more than likely going to be your gold layer in a company. So it's the nearest really to the world of Power BI. So here you're going to be able to transfer a lot of the skills that you've built up in modeling, you know, building star schemas, doing all that kind of stuff. But you're just going to be doing it in slightly different technologies, right? So you're going to have to learn how to apply what you've learned in Power BI to a different technology stack, to the world of SQL, right? How can you produce that stuff using SQL views, SQL tables, stored procedures, all of that kind of stuff. And SQL is a really, really valuable skill set for you to learn, and it'll make you employable by basically any company in the world that does data, not just those that use Power BI. So I definitely recommend that as an area to focus on. Thank you very much for watching. That's all we've got time for today. And I hope you found that valuable, my kind of ranting on different career options for you. Let me know if you are considering a career in Microsoft Fabric, which of these different options are most interesting to you. This is the last video in the series where I have been helping you transition from the world of Power BI to the world of Microsoft Fabric. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you found the content really valuable. And if you have, I would be really, really grateful if you can leave a like, let me know in the comments, share the series, the playlist with people in your organization that you think might find it valuable. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the channel soon.